All right, thank you for clicking on this video. And today what I'm going to share with you is the null safety type. And also at the end of the video, I'm going to share with you Flutter Web new amazing performance. So let's get on with the video. All right, so if you want to play around with the null safety feature of the upcoming update, Dart 2.9, then you can go to this website called nullsafety.dartpad.dev. So this dartpad has the null safety feature implemented. So there is samples or you could say exercises that you can do to get familiarized on how to use the null safety in Dart. So let's go to the first one, hello null safety exercise. So the first thing that is being changed is that in order for you to assign a variable to null, what you need to do is to have this question mark just right after your variable type. So make sure you have this question mark for you to assign a null to a nullable variable. However, this is a breaking change because if you were to look at this integer b, and then this b is being assigned to a null, this actually will have compile time error. So inside the error, it says a value type null can't be assigned to a variable type integer. But currently in our Dart, if we were to do the same, there isn't any error because the integer over here assumes that this is null. So no matter what, it will always return null, even you assigned it. So if I were to print B, if I run this, you could see null is printed out. So if I were to print another time, and then if I were to run it, this should then say null, null. So that is the breaking change when we go to Dart SDK 2.9. So in order for us to assign a null value into an integer variable type, you need to put in the question mark. There won't be any compile error. The next thing is maps. All right, so by default, map lookups return a nullable type. So you could see that this is a map with the type integer, integer. So the key and the value is both integers. So the key is one and the value is one. And if we want to get the value from the key one, then we will use this. So at the same time, we need to put a nullable type. So by assigning a lookup result to a non-nullable, this will cause an error. So when you want to have a map lookup, you have to make sure that your variable is a nullable variable. So by changing the variable type to a nullable type and also having a lookup to be a nullable type, there is no error messages. So if we were to print this, A and B should be null, C and D should be one and one. So that's correct. So that's how you get started with nullable types. The next thing is, let's go to variables and exclamations. Now, if you have a variable nullable type and then you assign a value that's not null, it, it will look something like this. However, you can assign its value to another variable with a nullable type. So, for example, integer b, but it's a nullable type, you can assign it to another a nullable variable. Same goes to c, because num also takes in integer. However, you can't assign the value to a variable that's not non-nullable. So you must make sure that non-nullable can assign to a non-nullable. It cannot be assigned to a nullable. Instead, use the exclamation point operator to turn the nullable value into a non-nullable value. So something like this. Looks very similar to JavaScript. And now the integer d has the value of a non-nullable type, which is 2. But be careful if the value of A were to be null instead of 2, an exception would be thrown. So this will be when it's trying to compile, it will shout an error. So let's put in null. 
and then if I were to run this you could see there's a script error so there is an error if you were to put a null if you were to put a null and then you put the exclamation mark so this a is equal to null is the same as having null exclamation mark so it doesn't run it will have a script error so let's remove that and make sure that a should not start as null now inside integer e you could see that a has the exclamation mark so if i were to run this because everything is assigned to the value a then everything will be printed out as two 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 <laughs> All right, so I think this is fairly simple. If you want to use a value from a nullable type, make sure you have the exclamation mark. That's about it. So, so that's something that you have to learn. So you could see there is this. The exclamation mark will have no effect because the target expression cannot be null. So the thing about A is that, so I assume I don't know whether a has been manipulated after this line but if I were to just remove the exclamation mark it actually works so if I were to run this it actually works so meaning that so if I were to create another variable for example e and I want to assign to a so at this current point after this compilation a is non-nullable I don't know whether this is a bug or this is what it should happen but I think it shouldn't be happening like this because this means that the exclamation mark actually overrides the initial value of a so i don't know dart team uh, you can look out on this so the next thing is classes and late fields so i think this is very very current to what we want to do in the future because most of the time what we do is that for example if we have a property that we create inside a class we will probably will not set it to null but to a certain value. So by having this late keyword, this will then help us initialize the variable that we have created inside the class. So for example, you can have a already initialized value over here, but then you want this integer b to be initialized later. So that's why the late keyword makes sense. So if you want to initialize when you are constructing a new instance, then you can put it over here. Or you can also create a void method that helps you set the value with uh, argument value. So this will help set the value C into the current value that you want. And just one thing to be careful is that if someone calls this method, so you probably have a getter method of some sort, then if you don't set the value C, this will have an exception or an error. So inside our main method over here, so we have created an instance of my class. So if I printed A and B, so A has been initialized for us at the start. B was initialized later when we create a constructor. So it's here, number two. Then set value will come in later when we use the set value method to set our value C and with the get value, we are able to print it out. But if we were to comment this line out and we will see how this goes, let's run this. You could see that there is a script error. So number one and two works because you can get the properties of A and B, but for C or you get value basically means dot C is the same as dot C. So even dot C, I can just run it and it also has this script error. So late will shout an error if it's not assigned. So late is good when you don't want to have a default value at first. You are waiting for the value to come in later. But the disadvantage is that you have to make sure that every value that you set to later must be initialized before you call it. If not, you will have a script error. So if you run this, it looks good. All right, the last one, let's put it all together. So just to have a recap, we've gone through null safety, exclamations, and the late fields. 
So let's see how we can apply it when we use all of this together. So to start, we have a class called my class. And now currently you could see that our value is set over here when we are inside our constructor. So what we can do is to first use the late keyword. You can see that our array is gone. Let's go to the next few lines. Now you can see integer a is equal to null. So we are setting our variable a to the value null. So that means we can do a null safety check. We will just put a question mark. And now you could see that integer b equals to a. This has an error. So if this was a value, I think it is okay. So if this was not a null, even like a normal integer, I will probably use this exclamation mark but the thing is if I were to do this and if I were to run it I will have a script error so the only way that you can do is for you to put another null safety and now a and b will be the same so you can see that this is an instance of my class and then you have a is equal to 1 b is equal to 2 and then for my class dot val, I will print out three. So it will run one, two, and three. So if you want to use the exclamation mark, the only time that you need to do is you will put one over here. Then at the same time, you will just remove this now safety check and then you will have an error. And then you will put this exclamation mark. So this A turns from a nullable type to a non-nullable type because integer is a non-nullable type. So if you run this, it looks. So that's about it for Dartpad. These are the different features that you will be able to use in the Dart 2.9. So I tried to use the non-nullable for this current Flutter version 1.18. And currently our Dart SDK, if you were to Command Shift P or Control Shift P, and if you were to type in dot change SDK, you could see that our dot SDK is 2.9 dash age. If you want to use this non-nullable language, if you were to open your VS Code problems, you could see that try updating pub spec YAML to get the minimum SDK. Let me zoom out for you guys. And you could see the SDK minimum has to be 2.9. So this is part of the experiment not able kind of errors. However, if I were to put pubspec.yaml and if I were to save this, even though I set 2.9, it doesn't check out. So this 2.9 is not a valid 2.9 version, even though there is a dash 5.0 dev flutter whatsoever. So currently you can't use the 2.9 version of Dart SDK, which is fine. You can just wait for it to come. So that concludes the null safety feature. The next thing that I want to share is the Flutter web performance increase. So I made a video saying, is Flutter web ready? And I said no. And I still do say no because of its performance and how it is not the same user experience to a normal web user experience. However, I am a bit more confident to create Flutter web projects because in terms of quality, you could see that the performance for Flutter web projects is better after this update. So I think this is my bad in terms of not reading the update properly. So you are able to have a load time that is three times faster with your Flutter web project and the code size is reduced by 2.7 times. So an example is this Flutter web gallery and this is the crane app that they have. And you can see that it has very nice and I assume high resolution kind of pictures. So one way to find out whether this Flutter web claims is true, we can just find out ourselves by going to the Flutter web gallery website. So the website is over here, Flutter gallery app. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go copy the link address 
and I'll go to incognito so that it will not use any cookies or any preloaded images to see how the performance is. So if I were to paste it over here and let's see how much time does it take to load. So where I am currently in Singapore, the internet connection is pretty fast. So let's see how fast it loads. And I think that is a fair amount of time for an app to load. And I think this is pretty cool. First thing that I realized that is different is that everything is actually way faster. So if I were to drag here and there, it is actually almost the web standard that I'm looking for. So let's go to Crane where it has all the different images that will pop up. So if I were to click on it, you could see the loading time is actually way faster than I used to remember. And if I were to scroll up, it is actually very fast. I'm very, very surprised and really very happy on this performance boost. But you could still feel the jankiness if I were to go to another tab. For example, if I were to go to sleep, you could see the animation is not very smooth, but I think the Flutter team will probably have some optimization on that kind of animation. And at the same time, you could say that if I were to transit another tab, I have to load all the pictures over here. But if I were to just scroll the pictures up and down, it looks fairly fast. I'm very impressed. Like, wow. So I don't know what optimization they had, but I think for the current Flutter Web SDK, it is pretty good. So that's about it. The now safety feature, it is a breaking change because if any variables that you create using a type have to be converted into a now safety type in order for you to use the new features. And then Flutter Web performance, I'm very, very happy about it. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you are excited about Flutter Web, smash that like button. And if you want more of these videos, subscribe and comment down below on what Flutter Web and even future Flutter or Dart features you want to see from them. That's about it. Stay safe and all the best. Bye-bye.